My name is Linda Swanson and I live in Montreal, Canada and I am thrilled to be the Raphael Prize recipient. I've always been interested in ceramics because I grew up in a household that used handmade pottery. I studied throwing, became a, a production potter for a short time and realized I needed to learn a lot more about uh, clays and firing. So I went back to school and at that point, the world of possibilities in ceramic materials really opened up for me. I started exploring the way that clay could move from uh, being a liquid into a solid form, being dissolvable to being permanent. And those shifts and changes in the material ended up being what I really became interested in and then moved into being uh, the primary aspects that I explored in my work. My studio is full of activity. It's kind of like a laboratory. It's in the oldest industrial building in Montreal. And it is a space that really gives me not only a place for material experimentation, but is a, is a good place to contemplate these experiments and to think about how I can expand them and extend them into larger pieces. The piece that I submitted for the Raphael Prize was really inspired by a landscape that I saw in Iceland where the glaciers are melting into the sea and the striations in the glaciers are volcanic ash and so there's a kind of mix of earth and ice and solid and liquid and that's really where the ideas for these uh, glazed pieces like cypress lumen came from. The striations in the piece are somehow related in a way to that volcanic ash that's that's spewed onto the glaciers. The lumen pieces are formed really out of a series of faults. So they're formed from slumping, they're formed from uh, crazing, which is a, a cracking in the surface of the glaze. These faults really bring out a kind of intriguing aspect of the materials and the behavior of the material um, itself. So these pieces act in a way like a topographical map of the, all of the tensions and stresses that are set up in the firing that then once the piece comes out of the kiln are released in the in the atmosphere in the form of crazing. So with cypress lumen it's set up uh, in a round format with a frame so that you really have the illusion of being lost in that surface. The installation that I've created for this show is made out of a very particular kind of clay called bentonite. And the bentonite clay has the ability to absorb exponentially. So it can one little particle of bentonite can absorb water and expand to up to 15 times its own size. So as water is uh, dripping onto the clay field in this installation, the clay will absorb the water and swell and expand and almost appear to grow. And while we think of clay as an inert material, an installation like this reminds us that materials have a certain energy themselves, they have a certain power themselves. What I think is so distinctive about ceramic materials is their ability to transform and in fact this is the distinctive characteristic of ceramics as opposed to other sculptural materials. Ceramic artists need to be artists of prediction. In fact we can't necessarily determine precisely how uh, everything will come out although we try to get as close as we can. There is a step where we as artists are subject to the final transformation of the fire or the water or the material itself. The moment that I really loved in ceramics the most was opening the kiln and that moment of discovery where what you put in is different than what you're getting out. And so that moment of discovery is the thing that I get to experience all the time in my studio as I set up these wet clay installations and every day when I come in it seems like there's another moment of discovery of a way that a material has changed that I hadn't expected or I couldn't predict.